Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what's been going on most recently, what we think is likely to happen next and all that wonderful stuff. After seeing the Fed do a 0.25, bottle it and not go after the 0.5 or even better go for the 0.75, uh, of course I never won the cards but nonetheless uh, we did see them do a 0.25 big takeaway is that they're not going to be doing any cuts this year and um, so that was pretty apparent from the speech so again we'll look at that as uh, continued 0.25s for the foreseeable uh, ultimately they're still uh, yeah, aiming to kind of get down inflation uh, the key message being you know that cuts uh, rate cuts are not coming this year and essentially that the banks are safe right the banks are safe you can you can get your money back into the banks that's the message um nonetheless let's jump down and uh, stop mocking um the fed let's let's jump down into the charts right what did we see yesterday when it came to a btc and well we saw us break down out of the channel so we'll talk about this yesterday uh, essentially here we'll talk about the higher highs the higher lows have a tendency to have a breakdown not a push up we we were hoping to push up higher uh, we had that mapped out on l8way theory um, and uh, unfortunately i think we've, we've kind of come down quite a bit now so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, l8way theory side of things uh, and then review whether or not we think um we can can see more upside i don't think we can but let's let's jump into this right so our expectations were and that we were going to structure this out and move towards 30 to 31,000. Uh, obviously, that structure is not valid now. Okay, a lot of this has completely broken down. So, for example, this is no longer valid. We can see that this is uh, not quite in here. Um, and we can see that we kind of have this five wave structure right in here. Um, we have this move coming up. Um, and we also have this one right in here as well. So what's interesting about this structure is we're going to have to scrutinize a few things a little bit more uh, than we probably would have wanted to. So let's go ahead and jump into this, right? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what was going on here. Okay, and for that, I think 15 minute time frame should hopefully give us what we need. Okay, so we're looking at this little run up here. And yeah, to me, it still looks like it's valid. Um, essentially well, it was always a little bit iffy about this little part so it could just be a 335 that could probably be what explains it um so let's see one two up here for three four and then five so i i think yeah we're gonna have to kind of look at it like that so uh, i'm gonna draw that in as one two and then three like that a b and c let's come back up into our hourly chart here um Time frames. Time frames are very important because I see a lot of the comments on the YouTube channel uh, with people getting a little bit um, confused over what, why I have one video that is like bearish, and that's because it's on a macro time frame, and then one that was being a little bit more bullish, and that's because it's on the smaller time frame. And we're on the smaller time frame stuff here, right? The afternoon is going to be the more macro view stuff. And um, so, if we think of this as our corrective structure, uh, we also see this little move coming down as also a potential running flat actually yeah i would say that's potentially a running flat uh right in there yeah so all in all i think that that and that would be a nice little run uh right inside there so that would work then we have this move this one this one uh and then in here i think we can go with a diagonal approach possibly or alternatively, this little move from that C wave is not quite right. Let's come back down to our 15 uh, and just check that. So really what we're looking at is this little run right in here and then this run right up into here. Uh, and the reason is that this is a pretty impulsive run with a diagonal at that end and a potential diagonal at this end. So uh, the reason that this looks like it's a diagonal might not be actually it could just be constituted as a uh, w x y x z which would probably be a good fit let's see if we can get that to come on in e four it's a tight it's a tough call i think i think we're gonna have to consider it as five uh, so it is still five by the looks of it uh, so five up here and then we come down in three to here we have to have five coming up to here and that's where things really start to kind of pull back down a little bit uh, we'd have to look at this as maybe a contracting diagonal let's come back up into our hourly uh, right in here uh, let's go ahead and just check this from the low up into here and from the high oh, 
I grab hold of the line. Yeah, it's tight, but I think that's the only way to kind of look at it. Big wave one, two, small three, four, and then five. Uh, I think that's the only way of getting that to work because then we'd have to look at that as A, B, and C. Okay, so all in all, uh, and the reason that's right, the reason that that's really important is we can't just start with five waves and not end in five waves. You have to end in five waves if you start with five waves. I can't see a reason uh, for this being an ending structure. It's possible that it is. And actually, it's just a zigzag in there. I may have overcomplicated the beginning section here. Uh, it could have been a zigzag pattern right in there. Um, but I think it's probably going to be better to think of this slightly differently. So we'll leave it kind of like that. Um, and if we are to do this, three, two, three, four, down here, this is an interesting level. I don't think we'll push up any higher, but we'll see how that kind of plays out. Let's jump back down to our 15 minutes here. Um, and we want to take a look at what was going on during that Fed uh minute hikes and stuff and i do think that's a very impulsive run uh we have this move here we have to kind of check in fact i might take this to a five minute uh this area here is very important to us um we'd want to see this as uh, a bit more than what it is but i don't think it's impulsive i think it's just going to be w x y x z uh let's go ahead and just yeah we're, we're not we're not impulsive on that so um it looks like it is but it, it's not so uh, it doesn't meet those requirements so w x y x and z right in there so that we know that that is just corrective right and it's really important that we understand that it's corrective and not impulsive and uh, so it looks like it's a big impulsive move down here um but it's actually just w x y x z now it could of course be a diagonal only if we actually start to see an impulsive move next Okay, so if we start to see an impulsive move after this and we go down quite significantly, then and only then can we consider that a diagonal structure. Uh, until then, I think we should consider that um, as a WXYXZ corrective. Uh, so if it's corrective down, corrective up, quite clearly corrective up here, uh, our expectations will be that we will go down next. It can still rally up a little bit further, but we'll just assume that we've got the existing high nailed. It, it probably will push up a fraction more. Um, our low end target range then has to be down here okay at uh, at this little uh, little range right here um so it's basically going to be twenty five thousand to twenty five and a half thousand dollars um and that would then allow us to kind of look at this as a corrective a b and c structure as i said if it goes um it goes impulsive then our target has to be down here at 24,300 okay so only if you hit 24,300 are you at that impulsive level where you can then start to think of this more as a one two kind of three four five kind of structure like that um until then uh, it's just looking corrective okay so that's kind of where that sits i think we can kind of put a pin in that higher move for now uh, see how that kind of goes um, but basically a breakdown has occurred here um, and it's a bit soon on the daily charts to kind of map that out um, we'll see whether or not we get a change of characteristic on the daily later let's jump over into smart money concepts here um, so smart money concepts has had um a continuation of the trend upwards a break of structure here uh, this happened uh, yesterday at two o'clock in the afternoon then of course we see this pullback it's pretty natural that when you get these break of structures uh, you have some kind of pullback like this one here this one's just a bit deeper um, and this would get broken if we were to come down uh, deeper than this uh, this low over this side uh, I hasn't got there yet we found support on the 200 EMA and we're finding resistance on the 50 EMA 50 EMA was currently or was previously support now resistance the 200 EMA has acted as support but I don't know if that's going to be long lived or not our trend uh, trend line our um, parallel channel here we actually bounced from it briefly. I found good support there, and then it came back down after and crashed it past there. We have left two gaps behind at the moment. One up here is the initial surge fell down. That's 28,000 to 28,300. And then we've got this little tiny one down here. Expect that to kind of get filled out as well. You can see the rejection there on the 50 EMA. So essentially, I think the next move is down. Uh, we'll be targeting out that slightly lower range. Um, but for the most part, that's where it is. And if I was to trade this, I would be looking to kind of short yeah, pretty much I'd probably go market here and I'd probably be looking at um, trying to get our stop loss pretty tight on this one. Um, I would probably look to put it um, probably look to put it around here. So I'd probably look to put it just 
above this breaker structure. I think about there would be a pretty nice place for it. Uh, so a pretty broad one, but I think we'd have to come down towards the 24, I think I said it was. Let's go ahead and just throw that in. Um, right in here, for example, I would put uh, this to our current structure high, and then, yeah, we'll be looking at uh, basically just bringing this down towards our 25 and a half. It would give us a risk reward ratio of 2.27. I'd be pretty comfortable with that. Um, and then we can kind of see it there. So if you are looking to kind of trade, that would be my thoughts on it, but just my humble opinion on where I think I would be looking to put my stop loss and take profit and stuff like that. If you're looking to trade, why not check out BitGet linked in the description down below. Um, it's a fantastic platform. It's where I do all of my spot trading. It's where I do all my leverage trading. Um, they do some fantastic offers at the moment as well. Deposit $50 USDT, get $10 USDT uh, as cash back. They also do deposit bonuses all the way up to $8,000 and uh, a whole host of additional uh, benefits as well and lucky draws and things like that. So uh, do check it out, linked in the description below. And if you are going to sign up using our BitGet link in the descri description below, um, you can take part in the cheeky crypto BitGet co trading competitions that happen every single week. Every single week it resets and there's a 100 USDT up for grabs. It's based on the person who has the best ROI percentage for the week. Um, so again, uh, it's something that happens every single week within the Discord server. All details are found in Discord, so go ahead and check it out if you are of interest or if you are actively trading. Trade with BitGear, um, and there's some fantastic deals available using our affiliate link. Take part in our competitions uh, that we do down in Discord. Um, ultimately, I think there's going to be some pretty good gains to be made here on Bitcoin um, before we see any kind of reversal back to the upside and all that kind of wonderful stuff. So let me know your thoughts and comments then the uh, thoughts uh, down in the comment section down below. Really interested to kind of think uh, get everyone's kind of thoughts and opinions on what they think is going to happen do you think that we're going to be tapping into that 30k range or do you think now it's just a bit of a grind back to the downside uh, for btc and we've got to fill those gaps that were left behind uh, really interested to get your thoughts and opinions if you found it useful and informative smash the like button I do appreciate that if you're new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe until the next one though guys have a fantastic day we are not financial advisors and none of what we have communicated verbally or in writing here should be considered as financial advice. It is not. Do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate office and understand that investing in any crypto is risky. If you do, you need to be prepared to lose your entire investment. This video is an information and entertainment purposes only. All our videos are strictly personal opinions. Please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit for people. Our videos are not financial advice.